Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the completely captivating Takahashi TS-65 P-Type. This telescope was first released in 1973 and it's important for several reasons. It was the first telescope to have an integrated polar scope right in the polar axis. This was the first one. So you could actually polar align this scope quite precisely. Although it's a little tricky because there are no fine adjustments in either azimuth or altitude on the mount. You're stuck with just using a wrench, tightening it down, and um, going for the best you can do. Nevertheless, it still made accurate polar alignment much easier. And these scopes were mostly designed for piggyback astrophotography anyway, as you'll see. The reason for the small size of this telescope is kind of intuitive. It is designed to fit into a small package. This is the case for it right here. And it's pretty heavy. It probably weighs 40 pounds or so. But nevertheless, it's very portable. Taken on a train or maybe a bus uh, to go far from the city lights. According to Koji, uh, many people in Japan in those days, in the 1970s, 1980s, uh, lived in the city, didn't have a really good way to get out of the city except to ride a bus or a train. Um, so they would go away from the city lights, do their astrophotography with a little portable unit like this, and then uh, come back probably same night. As you can see, this telescope is at its highest, not very well positioned for uh, standing use. Even sitting use is a little bit challenging. But uh, this is an extension pier that helps with that situation. Let me show you what it looks like with that. So you can see this puts the scope at a much more satisfactory height. Much more convenient for, especially for standing observations. So you can't possibly stand down that low. Seated on the ground, apparently a lot of Japanese would sit on the ground and observe just like that. And they'd be fine with that. This would be suitable too, standing up. There are a couple of different ways to mount cameras on this scope for astrophotography. You might need some extra counterweight, of course. Let's see here, let me show you what this looks like. You can see this thing is loaded for bear. You're going to need a, uh, a guiding eyepiece down here. Back in those days, taking a scope out away from the city lights and doing astrophotography was apparently quite a big deal. More of a big deal in Japan than in the United States, I think. The TS-65 P-Type is a triplet semi-apochromat. Uh, got a whole lot less color than an achromat in the same focal ratio. This is 500 millimeters, so it's real short, fast telescope. This is a 65 millimeter, 900 millimeter focal length standard achromat, TS-65, the original. I compared these two and I found that as far as I could tell, the color was just about the same in this one as in this one. So in this one, you have effectively a much shorter, um, effectively achromat with a really good color, the same kind of color you get in an F15 achromat, which is not bad, not, not bad at all. Okay, let's see what we have in this box. First of all, this extension pier, uh, there's not enough room in this box for that, so it has to be carried separately if you want to take it with you. You know, inside here you have the cutest little legs you're ever going to see. Three of those. <clears throat> lots and lots of accessories. We'll go over those individually. And the packing scheme for this thing is pretty darn tricky because there's only about maybe one way that this will fit in, in here. Uh, 
Now, in this case, the OTA is inside its clamshell, and the whole thing comes out. Like that. Probably going to be best at some point to remove the OTA from the clamshell. Then you have inside here is the tripod head, counterweight, slow motion controls, and spreader. Here are a few Takahashi accessories. This, of course, is a set of eyepieces. A couple of nice eyepieces, including a very nice ortho. And the star diagonal. This is Barlow, 2X Barlow. This is rather fancy. 32 millimeter Erfel. Look at the size of that. Big chunk of glass there. This is a camera mounting adapter. Put that on the scope. Put a camera on it. Same thing, different style. And this is a camera adapter for the back of the scope. Goes to a standard T-ring. Here we have the TS65P type set up next to a TS50 from about a year or two earlier. You can see the boxes are almost the same size, and they're almost the same weight. The TS-50 is maybe five pounds heavier. And you can see the overall size difference. For doing piggyback astrophotography, I think the TS-50 wouldn't be too bad. It doesn't have that polar scope, though. For a sense of scale, here's the TS-65P type right next to the TS-65 original version. Quite a difference. This is the leg from a TS-65 D-type. This is the leg from a TS-65 P-type, just for comparison. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the TS-65 
P-Type from 1973. Thank you for watching.